Foles now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. Back to throw. Stepping up, he'll try and run. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Moving around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but... It's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. And he's got it in wide open, complete. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. A good pick up there, a 22. We saw a number of good games earlier today. This one might top all of those. It's been a dandy as we come up on first and 10. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And the Cowboys pressure gets there this time for the sack. Demarcus Lawrence. He's the one to get him. And that's sack number seven for him on the year. I think you'd have to say defensively, these guys are doing their job pretty well, right? Yeah, we talked about them holding them under 20 points, right, on defense. And they've done that. They've held them. The problem is their own offense hasn't answered their challenge, which was to score more. Yeah, exactly. I remember you saying magic number was right around 20, and the offense has been the issue. You're right. The reception, good for seven. It's third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Here's Foles. He can run for it, and he will. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Pretty solid gain of seven yards that time as he scrambled, but now they face a fourth down. That was a good effort there, trying to do it on his own. But as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you. And if you take off too quick to try and get him down, he might lock it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. And a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. This one taken from the seven. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. And now here come the Cowboys. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first down. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive. 12 yards. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. A first down throw for Prescott. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Williams. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Prescott looks to throw on first. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack 
as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for them. And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. Nigel Bradham coming in hard on the blitz. He gets him down for a loss of four. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. A second down throw for Prescott. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of muddle in the middle of the field where you go make a play on the football. And this is going to be incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet man because of the coverage. It was way too tight, unable to find anyone open. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Gardner, I think they saw something there. I mean, they came from the right side deliberately, and you know there's always a designated guy who goes and blocks it, but it's the rest of his teammates that get him free. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Again. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. Play fake. He'll look to throw. Rolling to his right. And his throw is incomplete. He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it. Not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. <laughs> just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. Because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now. Here comes the ball. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Jalen Smith in there with pressure yet again. And that's the seventh time they've dropped him here this afternoon. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. Dallas gets set to take the field. A 20th carry here for Elliott. And he's going to be taken down shy of the five-yard line. Give the tackle that time to Rodney McLeod. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room to get to run the punter out there. He can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, he didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. Looking to throw. Prescott. Over the middle, it's Thomas. They needed some breathing room. He gave it to him. 11 yards and a first down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. It's 
So that last play gives him a little more space now. Here's first and 10 at the 16-yard line. First down, Prescott. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Prescott now on second down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Nigel Bradham, the linebacker, right there on the coverage. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past. The biggest teaching point, get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. Pressure comes, and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. Chris Long in there to get him for sack number nine now on the year. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense, six defensive backs. None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep their, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing, the O-line coach will. Well, now comes the Cowboys punter. He's been terrific so far. Let's take it inside his own 40. We'll call that a 49-yard punt, but a net of just 39 following the 10-yard return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Eagles offense now, they head back on the field. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really right what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there, didn't it? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They've got to go thank the guys on D. Now Foles. Ertz has it left side. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Hey, 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 hey. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to bring up a third down. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now. Just stop them, get to the ball. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. David Irving, he's the one to get him, and that's sack number seven for him on the year. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. A big one there. That gives them a little cushion and makes it a two-score game. Yeah, bled a little time off the clock, put some points on the board. It's not totally out of reach yet, but it has to feel pretty good to them right now because as a defender, you go out on the field and say, guess what? You can put some points on the board, but that won't beat us. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. The offense for the Cowboys now working their way back onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. 
All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better than it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional right safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. And a good pick up there. He gets about six up to midfield. The Cowboys on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This is third and four. So the Cowboys in possession of the football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Prescott. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Here's Prescott. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Terrence Williams that time. And it's second down. Whenever they're trying to attack a zone defense, you're trying to figure out where your gaps are going to be. And depending on what type of zone they're playing, it could be on the outside, it could be in the middle, it could be in the seams, in the edges. In this case, they tried to attack the middle of the field, but this zone defense didn't allow it because they were able to see the ball come off the quarterback's hands and everyone was able to react to the football and knock it away. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. A dump off to Elliott. Only a yard on the completion. It's second and goal. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Here's second and goal, operating from the eight-yard line. Now Prescott. They'll set up the screen to Elliott. And yeah, this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that's going to bring up an interesting third and goal. It's a touchdown if he holds on. Instead, it's fourth down. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play, and the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. So you knew one way or another that they needed the two scores. They get the easy one out of the way. Now they'll get the ball back, hopefully. Yeah, and the question is, how do you accomplish that? Do you onside kick it? Or since you have all three timeouts, do you kick it deep? To me, I'm playing field position with all three timeouts. I kick it deep and try and pin them back there. A tough one there. They certainly wanted that when they needed it, but they didn't absolutely have to get it. They still do have three timeouts. You're exactly right. They had to attempt it. But even though they didn't get it, as you noted, with three timeouts, if they can get these stops on defense, all hope is not lost. Now the Cowboys are going to burn the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with 65 seconds remaining. That one looks like he'll throw here. He's got Dallas Goddard, his tight end over the middle. The Cowboys going to use their second timeout now as it comes with exactly a minute to go in the football game. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. And they'll run it here. Stop short of the 25. The second effort couldn't free him. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. As the clock will stop with 55 seconds remaining in the football game. Here we go, here we go. They stay on the ground. Again, it's a giant. 
Credit the tackle to Chris Covington, six-round pick in 2018. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well because we've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. It happened in the NFL. The miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. And Elliott puts this one through. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So yet another field goal to end a drive. That has been a very common theme. He's now hit five of them in this game. Yeah, Brandon, as an offense, you hate that you've had to call on your kicker so often. But you have to love the fact that time and time again, he's come through. This one taken from the seventh. Good return. He's across the 35-yard line, right around the 36. And they've gone final now out in Glendale. And give that one to the Cardinals. They wind up winners. Sam Bradford, two touchdown passes in the W. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Prescott to throw. He's going to let it fly. And this will be caught at the 30. Oh, that was dangerous. Threw it into coverage, almost picked. But instead, they'll keep it on second down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. Prescott, now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. Well, Charles, it's great to win at home.